Hey everyone, and welcome to the February subscription video where I'm tasting all the three coffees that we're sending out to all our subscribers around the world. Now, I hope you had a not too bad of a January. Here in Norway, we're looking at uh, some lockdown again, so a lot of people are staying at home drinking coffee. Of course, the winter is still cold, so how about some nice, warm, comforting coffees for February? I think will be very nice. So, we're sending out three different coffees in February, and if you subscribe to, let's say, six bags, that means you're going to get two bags of each. But if you subscribe to three bags, you will get one bag of each. Uh, if you subscribe to one bag, you will get the first one, and so on. So all this is explained on our um, website. So if you want to subscribe to our coffees, you can go in there, timwendelbow.no, and check out our different subscriptions. You can also give it as a gift to any, someone you like. Whew. Let's just uh, do it, shouldn't we? So the first coffee we're sending out this month is from Kenya, and I'm doing that because it's really tasting good at the moment, although it was harvested a year ago. And I know that a lot of our fans and followers really love our African coffees, especially the Kenyan ones. So I thought, why not send that out to all the subscribers in February? It's a good treat in the cold winter to drink something fruity and nice. Uh, so for me, this coffee is all about juiciness and fruitiness. Ah, perfect. Now this coffee is from a washing station, also called a factory, that's named Karagoto. And it's situated in Nyeri, very close to the town of Karatina. So if you're dri driving to Karatina, you kind of take a little road um, off the main road. And then there's a little coffee mill and, and uh, you will soon see the Karagoto wet mill. Now this coffee is uh, kind of a blend of coffees that are grown uh, by many, many small farmers. They're not small, but they have small farms. Um, and they don't have big enough farms to kind of process and dry their own coffee to sell it in the market. So what they do, they, they form cooperative societies. And the cooperative societies will build different wet mills in different areas where their members are living. So this coffee is kind of a blend of coffees from the members living near the Karagoto washing station. And uh, during the harvest, they will come and, and sell coffee cherries to the factory or the wet mill, as they call it. And at the wet mill, they kind of bulk up all the cherries and then they start to process and dry the coffee together. And then it's sold uh, either direct to a roaster like us or through the Kenyan coffee auction, which happens every Tuesday during the coffee harvest. Now most of these, uh, ooh, very fruity. <clears throat> most of these farmers are growing the SL28 varieties and SL24 varieties uh, that are typical for Kenya. SL stands for Scott Labs, so or Scott, Scott Laboratories. So it's a, a human selection of coffee plants, uh, but they just gathered seeds from different places, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how actually the SL28 and 34 actually came about, but. It's definitely made a, or was selected in the Scott Laboratories and number 28 and 34 was just a number on the plant. So these are very, very traditional and, and common plants in uh, Kenya. You can also see them in some other African countries. The problem is that they are very often attacked by leaf rust and another um, fungus called coffee berry disease. Uh, so it's hard to kind of keep them in, in production unless you treat them very well. So if you have a very high altitude farm, you, you have less problems with these kind of uh, fungal attacks. But um, in farms in lower areas, they, they actually have to plant hybrids or something to, in order to prevent this uh, hybrids, meaning Ruiru 11 and Batian, which is also in this coffee, because those coffee varieties are actually resistant or somewhat resistant to leaf rust and coffee berry disease. So, uh, that means they don't have to spray a lot to, to, to kind of keep the plants producing. Nevertheless, most of the farms in this area, they are still growing the SL28 and 34 varieties. And you can kind of taste that, I think. Uh, I've tasted uh, enough of those hybrids to, to say that um, they will probably affect the aftertaste a little bit in the cup. 
Not always. I've also tasted fantastic uh, cups of these uh, hybrids like Ruido 11 and especially the Batian. But um, I think in general, we can say still that the SL28 and 34 varieties are a little superior when it comes to taste. They just taste a little more elegant and fruity than the hybrid coffees. This is no exemption. This is a very, very elegant, juicy and fruity coffee. It really reminds me of rose hip tea, but you can also find this kind of hibiscus or Florida de Jamaica, Jamaica flower um, flavors and kind of blackcurrant, blackberry, these kind of red berry flavors. It's quite tart, so high acidity, but it's really backed up with that fruity flavor and lots of sweetness and intensity. So for me, this is a, one of my favorite Kenyan coffees, and I've been buying from this uh, wet mill for many, many years, the Karagoto factory. We actually even uh, sponsored some drying tables with our customers. Uh, so we built eight huge metal drying tables for this factory so they could have more capacity during the harvest to dry the coffee. So harvested in 2019, at the end of 2019, so December, so it's kind of the current harvest. They're actually harvesting right at the moment. I just started receiving samples of the 2020 slash 21 harvest uh, and from the same factory and it, the coffees are tasting really good and this is also tasting really good. What I find though is that when the Kenyan coffees are really fresh they can be a little closed and almost a little greenish in the flavor but once they've kind of rested a little bit the fruit flavors and wininess kind of start to open up a little bit more. So the first coffee we're sending out, Karagoto from Kenya. Uh, SL28 and SL34 varieties, very fruity and refreshing coffee. Ah, the second coffee and the third coffee comes from uh, very good friends of ours in Honduras, Marisabel Caballero and Moises Herrera. And I know we send out these coffees very often, it's just because those are the farmers we are actually buying from, but we do have many different harvests, many different lots and so on. This is the kind of current harvest, so they're also just beginning to harvest the coffee this year. So this is from last year, where they harvested mainly in February. They also start in January, some in February and some in March. But last year it was very concentrated, so these coffees were from February. Now the second coffee that we're sending out to all the two and, I guess, uh, um, five bag subscribers. Um, is um, Katoai variety from the Caballeros. You probably have tasted uh, this coffee before if you've been subscribing for a while. But what's uh, unusual, I think, is that this is unusually good. <laughs> Last year they had a fantastic harvest. And the coffees, uh, especially the Katoai, you can really taste it. It's a little bit more fruity, very sweet, and it has this kind of delicious dried fruit flavor that I kind of remember this coffee having in the, in the old days, but it's been kind of on and off a little bit over the years and definitely from this harvest it's back again. You know, it's compared to the Kenyan, I have to say it's very chocolatey and kind of more creamy, a little herbal. It has a little bit of this kind of green bell pepper flavor in the finish. But it's a little bit more rich, less acidic a more chocolatey style of coffee, but with, still with some kind of berry or dried fruit flavor. And I think this is because uh, uh, Moises started fermenting the coffees a little bit longer than he used to do. It's still not a very long fermentation and they remove a lot of the mucilage on the, on the coffee before fermentation with this mechanical demucilage remover, but they still let the coffee rest in a tank overnight to let it kind of ferment before they wash it. And then the coffee is centrifuged, so they remove most of the water and then taking to their house actually in Markala, which is about a 40 minute drive from the mill. And it's dried on raised beds on the shade, taking very good care of. So this is kind of the cream of the crop from his Katuai, and that we're one of the fortunate customers to kind of cut through and select the best lots from. So Brazilian variety. Uh, expect a little bit more chocolatey flavors, more richness, more sweetness, or not more sweetness, but kind of more sweet profile, I guess. But with this kind of dried fruit, so imagine you're eating like a chocolate with some dried fruit inside or raisins or something like that. 
So from the Caballeros, Katawaii coffee. Third coffee, it's no surprise anymore. It's a geisha. Mm -mm -mm. From the uh, Marisabel Caballero and Moises Herrera as well. Geisha variety, you probably, all of you know it. It's the famous variety that was kind of rediscovered in Panama, but it's from Ethiopia. I guess all coffee is from Ethiopia, more or less. Um, but um, the geisha variety is famous for its kind of floral and citrus character. And this, for me, it tastes a lot like a very sweet mandarin. Mm. And of course it's floral. It's kind of coffee flowers, jasmine, but that kind of sweet mandarin flavor and a little bit of kind of honey sweetness. It's so present in this coffee. And I think it's a little bit more aromatic than last year's, uh, or I guess two years ago. The last geisha we had was harvested in 20... 19. This was 20, uh, harvested in 2020, but the 2019 crop for me was a little bit more muted, not as expressive. This one for me is much more kind of intense, uh, a lot of mandarin flavor. Some people critique the geisha from being very light-bodied. I think this geisha from Marisabel and Moises is pretty heavy-bodied, but of course not as heavy-bodied as the, the Katawaii. Mm. But it's, it's very elegant, still hasn't enough power, I think, and sweetness. And this really nice mandarin flavor. So, the uh, Geisha, they actually won the Copo Excellence, which is a competition for coffee farmers that is held in different producing countries. They won the competition, I think, in 2018 with this particular Geisha variety. Of course, it's not the same harvest, but just uh, tells you a little bit about the potential in this coffee. And for me, it's one of my favorite geishas, uh, just because it's a little different than the Panamanian ones that are uh, normally a little bit more on the citric side and more kind of vibrant. And um, I think this is just a little bit more comforting to drink more of, if you know what I mean. Now, some people struggle with V60 or filter brewing, especially with like geishas and some Ethiopian coffees. That's because the fines, uh, for some reason, they produce more fines and the, they can block the filter so the water doesn't pass through fast enough. But the solution to this is not to necessarily grind coarser because that will only make a lot more big particles and those are really hard to extract. So then it will just end up with a really unbalanced cup. So what I, what I like to do when, when that thing happens, which can happen with this geisha, is make sure you pour a little bit more aggressively in the beginning um, and try not to stir the grounds too much because that really helps the fines to move down in the filter and, and block the paper filter. You should also use you know, boiling water as hot as possible. You're not burning the coffee. The, the coffee was roasted at over 200 degrees and your water is less than 100 when you pour it from a kettle. Even if the water is boiling, uh, you lose a lot of temperature just when you start pouring the water. So try to brew with as hot water as possible, especially for the, the geisha, but also for all our coffees because they're pretty, pretty light roast. So it really helps to extract more from the coffee and makes it more balanced in flavor. Now, if you drink the coffee extremely hot, it's not going to be as nice. So I highly recommend letting these coffees cool down a little bit, and especially the geisha and the Kenya. That means you'll get the fruitiness a lot more uh, present in the, in the flavors. Okay, so to sum up, for the one bag and I guess the four bag subscribers, we'll get two bags of the first one. Um, uh, the first coffee will be the Karagoto from Kenya. The second coffee will be a Katawaii variety from Marisabel and Moises Caballero and Herrera. And the third coffee is the Geisha from the same farmers in Honduras. Um, I really hope you like them. They're all washed, so very clean, elegant, no kind of funky flavors there. If you wonder what funky flavors is, you can listen to our podcast, uh, the Tim Wendelbo Coffee Podcast, where in our recent episodes we're actually discussing uh, natural processed coffees. None of these are natural processed coffees for a reason, and if you know, want to know why, you can listen to that podcast. Okay. Thanks for subscribing. We really appreciate it. It's been a huge help for us throughout this pandemic. 
And uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you next month as well. Bye-bye.